Hi, everyone. So a lot of people have difficulty with perspective, and they either don't know it or they wonder. When I Sometimes I hear people asking, you know, am I getting better? It's kind of a strange thing, you know? It's like almost anything else. You wouldn't ask that kind of question. You wouldn't ask, am I getting better? It's like, usually it's, hey, I think I'm actually getting better at this. When you actually feel like, it's like, when you don't have that sense of feedback, you know, am I getting better? It's like, you know, then that means that you don't know what the problems are. You're not dealing with the problems because you don't know what they are. Um, so, if you want to get better at a thing, you have to find out what the problems are, and then you have to take the bull by the horns, which is why we have things like exercises and practice exercises. So, what are the horns of the bull? In perspective, there's the smallest unit of information is the distance between two points. And from this, these two points of information, there's three ways in which that can change. You can take those two points of information, you can move them closer to the camera, you can pull them away from the camera. Right? So distance will affect the distance between two points. Then there's foreshortening. Meaning, if those two points line up, they, the distance appears to decrease, the two-dimensional distance. And then there's the actual physical distance between these three things. And of course, when we study the world around us, all of these distances between two points are always, they're very, they're, they're always changing. And um, people can't deal with all three of these things stuck together. So, you want to get good at perspective, take one of those variables and throw it out. <laughs> it's really that simple. So, here, let me, let's start off with a simple frame. All right, so, I'm going to do this thing I call quilting, where I just create a quad out of, four units of distance or four lines, they're all the exact same spatial distance. So it's a known quantity. It's a unit. It's a unit of distance. That means that they're all the same. So that means that from here on out, every time I add something to the quilt, I know that distance A from here to here is the same thing as distance B, which is the same thing as distance C. All of these distances are the same. And the magic of this is I can just keep adding points just by adding a dot and extending the quilt. You can just extrapolate outwards. And the other thing is that you can use this to create sweeping and organic curved forms. And you can adjust it, right? It's like, oh, I guess I wanted to tilt, turn that thing around a little bit more. So it's very forgiving. And you're even able to warp the lines to some degree. So I, I, you can see that I'm curving these. And even if you're slightly inaccurate on one of those quilts, it's not a big deal. It's really about getting all of them to, it's the collective of, the, of all of these quads that makes it work. Now, I can keep curving this around and around and around that way, or I can try and reverse. So I'm just making this thing, I'm just pulling this shape out of my imagination. Just pulling this shape right out of my ass. It sounds incredibly painful. Just put some rounded corners on it. Anything that you're going to pull out of your ass should really have rounded corners on it. Shouldn't have any corners. <laughs> right, and I'm going to do a, a crossover here. So it's it's like the box exercise, but in this case, it's just just one plane of the, of the box. And I'm not going to bother drawing back faces. I'm not going to bother drawing the stuff that's on the other side of that. You don't have to. It's just not going to be visible. 
and you can go outside of the frame and I can continue this upwards and another thing about drawing is that a lot of being good at drawing has to do with just being good at approximation you know approximation means approximate it doesn't mean exact a lot of people get tripped up on trying to make things exact and when they do that they they lose sight of the whole thing whoops that looks like it's going a little wonky But this is the nice thing about doing the quilt is you only had to make an adjustment on one of those tiles. Let's push that further in. And you can extend these quilts, well, as long as you've got paper space to, as long as you have canvas space, you can keep extending it. And as long as the resolution of your line holds up. And I would highly suggest that you use you know, just get rid of all that brush pressure crap. It's really just a distraction. You'll notice that my brush does not have any pressure sensing. You know, just going to have to let go of that. I see so many people using pressure sensing brushes when they're doing these, these practice exercises. And I'm like, oh, really? You suck at perspective. And you can't. You know, it's like you suck at perspective, you're having difficulty making your lines go where you want them to, and you're going to throw on another dimension of having to deal with getting the right brush pressure. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's like, you're not that good, all right? And, and getting better at a thing means having a degree of humility, which is to say, well, I'm just not that good yet. So I'm going to take the easy way. I'm going to make things easier on myself because it's already hard enough as it is. I'm going to take the bull by the horns, right? The bull by the, the, the horns of the bull are, is not brush pressure. It's the dot. It's the vertex placement. And then the lines, which connect the vertexes, right? Like that, that's, those are the horns. The reason people don't get better is they don't take the bull by the horns. They don't deal with their problem. They would rather procrastinate. I call this productive procrastination where when you're having difficulty getting productivity in one area, you seek productivity in another area, right? So it is productive in a way, but it doesn't deal with the main problem at hand. And so you'll never get better at perspective if you engage in this sort of productive procrastination. If you just, you know, don't get away from your product productive procrastination, you just have to fucking nut up and deal with it. And the longer you wait, the harder, like the harder it gets just cause it's like, oh, you know, you're just gonna, it's just, gets harder and harder in your imagination. So really the easy way out is deal with the fucking problem. Take the bull by the horns and confront your problems. Get good scrub. Okay, so you can do these kinds of exercises. I think these are these far surpass the uh, the box exercises because it's much more free form. And then you can use it to model objects around your house, simple objects like let's say that water bottle. And I know that all of these, I'm drawing going to draw the top of the water bottle. All right, I know that all of these lines are the same unit length and I'm allowed to warp them All right I'm not going to try and swoosh a circle in I'm going to pay attention to every single unit that makes up that lid it's a little wobbly it's all right that's one unit down it's one unit down people are going to be like oh man it's too easy Shut up. You can't even do an easy thing well. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm talking about people like, like that I've encountered in the past. You know, it's like, I get it. You know, I know the feeling. And I'm also talking from experience, the feeling, what it's like to, uh, when you want to, you know, 
be a pro. You want to be a pro as soon as possible. So you're like, I want to do pro things right away. And so my answer to my past self, if I was ever to go back in the, in the past and talk to my past self, I'd say, shut the fuck up. You're not a pro. The fact that you suck at the easy stuff is why you suck. And the fact that you, you know, you want to take on things that you're not, that are way beyond your capabilities is why you suck. And you will continue to suck until you lower yourself to the level of doing what you are capable of. The point is to build your capability by doing the easy stuff first. I'm actually applying a little bit of curvilinear perspective to this. Yeah, it's a little wobbly. Who cares? The thing is that once you manage to be able to handle quilts of a certain size, of a uniform size, later you can deal with variable sizing of quads. And this is kind of like 3D modeling. It's just 3D modeling very often you have a quad structure, something known as topology or surface topology. I think one of the reasons why a lot of amateurs suck at drawing is they don't understand surface topology and they're trying to do this kind of visual tracing crap. They're just drawing the outline without actually understanding, you know, how to break the object down. So, and then something like this, right? It's like I could start creating the, I could start carving the lines over the quads. I can create the label gap. I can use the same thing to figure out the level of the water inside. And that's another thing is that it's not about, well, I'm just going to do this exercise and then forget about it. I'm like, no, you're not done. Like you haven't mastery of a thing is not whether you can do it. It's it's your mastery of a thing depends on how far you can push it to what level can you bring it? Right. People think of, of, these things as something that they're going to just do and then get it out of the way so they can draw the way they want. But I'm like, unless you can use the technique to draw whatever you want with that technique, you haven't mastered jack shit. You have to stop looking at things as exercises and, and, and these things as obstacles. You have to stop looking them at, at looking at them as, as in, well, this is different from what I wanted to do. This is different from what I expected. So it's in my way. And I need to get it out of the way. I need to just do it and then I can forget about it. No, no. This is this is a way to do things. It's not in your way. It is the way. You don't know the way. <laughs> oh, God. Dead meme. Right? So you have to find, you have to know the way. So yeah, that's done using like quilting and then I guess more advanced forms of the quilting is when you start to adjust, you start to do variable sizes of quilts. You can do something I call subdivision quilting where you would take a quilt of a known size and then you can say, well, this is a half quilt, right? So that's a half. And then you can say, well, this is, this is a quarter. That's like subdivision quilting, but yeah, take simple objects around you and then try quilting with them and try and get the perspective right. And See how you do. Try different perspectives, different angles on the thing. Rotate the object around and place it in a different place and then requilt the thing. And, you know, don't worry about 
being accurate, get a good approximation. It's not about accuracy. 